Howdy ho gamers, Nintendo here once again, and I'm kind of doing a video response, kind of this thing that's been going around on YouTube, uh, it's the five most valuable games in your collection, and um, basically a friend of mine told me about it, but I hadn't really heard about it on YouTube, and so he referred me to a video, but I'm not sure if this guy actually started it, his name is a a Crosby 1099 if I remember the name correctly and he did a really good video I just had never heard of him before and I'm not sure if he's the one that actually started it or if he was just another person down the line that started this little trend but I figured I'd join in and hopefully some more people that I know that do YouTube uh, will join in as well but basically all it is is your five most valuable games in your collection but each game has to be from a different console and that's what makes it difficult. As you, as you probably know, I'm a Super Nintendo collection uh, collector, and so most of my most valuable games are on Super Nintendo. So I got, you know, my most valuable one that I have, and that's kind of right now because I've picked up a couple others that haven't been shown on videos yet, so I'm not even gonna include those. Uh, but there are definitely ones that I have that are on Super Nintendo that are more valuable than uh, the ones that I'm showing you here. But, I'm keeping with the tradition, and it's just going to be five games for five different consoles. And with that being said, the first game is going to be Xenoblade Chronicles for Wii. And uh, I just got this recently. I basically traded some Pokemon games for it at a, a GameStop, I believe. Which I don't normally frequent GameStops pretty much at all. I mean, it's all newer stuff and uh, they will take any of my older stuff anyways, so what's the point? I mean, I'm not, I don't really spend cash on new games. The only new systems I really collect for are 3DS, and I was even surprised to see they still had Wii games in there. But anyways, I collect. Uh, I, I got uh, Xenoblade Chronicles for my collection, I popped that in, and it is an amazing looking game. It really looks like an MMORPG, but for a console, and it acts kind of like an MMORPG, so that's pretty, pretty damn cool. I thought it was a pretty neat game. Uh, graphically and musically it really shows off what the Wii is capable of and I think a lot of people don't really recognize what the Wii is capable of including myself at first and now that I've seen a few good games and especially Xenoblade Chronicles it's really making me kind of go back and reconsider uh, what the system is capable of so uh, that is definitely one I recommend you guys pick up uh, while you can for a decent price it keeps going up in price uh, right now, just disc only copies are worth like 70 bucks, but it's Christmas time, so probably a little less throughout the normal year. Uh, but a complete copy in this good a condition, it's worth a bit more, so who knows. <clears throat> Pick it up while you can there. Uh, of special note, there is a reproduction of this, and I believe it's a GameStop thing. And okay, here's what I've heard about it. I'm not sure if this is true. And also, people do switch out cases, uh, albeit not very often, usually collectors only do that. Apparently, the uh, GameStop exclusive where they re-released Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, it says Nintendo on that engraving of the case, on the white case. I don't know if you guys can see that, but on mine it says, it says Wii. This is the original case that came in with mine, and mine's in such good condition, I'm, I'm confident mine's an original. Uh, I've heard there's other ways of telling as well, but... Um, if you see one that has the Nintendo logo instead, uh, that is more than likely a reproduction because Nintendo actually made uh, aftermarket white Wii cases, if I remember correctly. So pretty much anybody can buy them, including GameStop, and then put their games in that. So anyways, off on that rant, that's the first game. Second game I have that's going to be most popular uh, on a different console is one of my favorite games of all time talked about this many many times i've beaten it recently for the first time since i was a kid and this is uh dragon warrior 4 and uh dragon warrior 4 is a fantastic rpg that like i said i've talked about many times before you guys are probably sick of hearing me talk about that game but uh very fun game five different chapters uh the first four chapters involve you having different characters and uh, doing different things with them, different quests. And then the fifth cha chapter combines all the previous characters from all the first four chapters. And uh, you have a massive chapter with, uh, you know, a shit ton of people on the fifth chapter that is huge and just awesome. So, uh, yeah, Dragon Warrior 4, 
kind of weird on prices. Sometimes it is like, you know, 55, 60 bucks, but lately it's been more like $70, uh, even sometimes 80. I saw it for sale a couple times for 80 bucks. I'm not sure if it sold for that or not, but uh, I didn't really check into it because I already own a copy. I've had this copy for so damn long. But anyways, that being said, uh, Dragon Warrior 4 is, in my opinion, one of the best games on the Nintendo Entertainment Center, uh, System, and I'm going to be doing a review on it eventually once I get the gameplay footage down. But, uh, yeah, you need to pick it up. You need to get it before it's just, you know, a $200 game or some freaking crazy shit like that. Nintendo's weird, man. The prices just keep going up. <laughs> but anyways, yes. So, next game I have for you guys that is uh, totally expensive and uh, really, really cool as well. That would be Radiant Historia for the DS. And you guys might be thinking to yourselves, that's not really that rare of a game. And... It really isn't. It's retained its value fairly well um, through the time that it's been released. It's an excellent RPG from Atlas, but uh, the catcher is, is I got this pretty much the day it came out and I uh, got one of the few copies that was available to me in my town. And this is the special edition with the cardboard box and uh, it also has a soundtrack which you can only get with this edition. And I have never even opened it. The uh, seal is still on the tape. Never actually opened. Or the tape is still on the case. Whatever I was trying to say. Anyways, uh, yeah, with the music soundtrack and the bonus thing, this game, I don't know exactly how much, but $80, $90, it seems like pretty freaking hard to get. Mine's in brand new condition. Correct me if I'm wrong on the price. I'm really not sure. But it's up there around these game's prices. <clears throat> so... The next game I have for you, oh, and if you don't know what Radiant Historia is, amazing RPG, Atlas, you go back in time, change your destiny, change the timeline for the better of humanity, and it's freaking amazing, just check it out. Okay, so the next game I have for you, fourth game I have, uh, jumps up the price quite a bit because uh, it's complete in box, mine's in really good condition. Uh, disc is a little scuffy, but God, see if you can ever find a complete copy of Shining Force CD. Uh, not easy to find. Pretty hard to find, actually. And uh, Shining Force CD is an excellent, excellent tactical RPG. Um, and uh, really good music, just awesome graphics. Uh, the graphics aren't what you'd expect for the Sega CD. More like a Genesis game, but really the Sega CD was more about boosting the power of the sound more than graphics. But uh, yeah, Shining Force CD is a really, really good RPG. and. Uh, one of the few that I really want to complete uh, of all the tactical RPGs that I own. Uh, but yeah, I can't even say enough about it. I eventually want to do a review on that as well because I, I don't know if I've seen a really in-depth review of that game. But again, I'm kind of waiting to do some gameplay footage. So we'll see what happens in, with that in the future. Uh, I've got it most of the way worked out. If you guys can suggest anything to me, that would be amazing. But yeah, trying to do gameplay footage fairly soon. That is number four, Shining Force CD. That can go for in the condition it's in as much as 125 complete um but i mean disc only it's like even like 90 100 bucks sometimes so i don't know price on this one seems to go up and down a lot but i've seen it sell for some pretty ridiculous prices probably especially during this time of year and you guys can always feel free to correct me in the comments below i am not going to get butthurt about that it's just more information for me to retain in my skull so, the last game I have for you, and of course the most expensive game that I own, um, which kind of isn't true. Now, here's the problem with the last game that I have for you guys. The last game I have for you is definitely one of the most expensive games that I own. However, I own one other game for the Super Nintendo that is just slightly higher in value, and uh, I'm not showing it for two reasons. Uh, one, I can only have one Super Nintendo game on here, and this one's real close in price. And two, I haven't actually shown the pickup video of me getting that next. It's actually in one of my next pickup videos, uh, just awaiting to be filmed and edited. Uh, I'm behind on pickup videos, so I do actually have a game that is a little bit more expensive than this one. But as far as you guys know, my most expensive game right now was in my most recent pickup video, which has been by far my most popular video, which is really cool. I really, really enjoy seeing more views and uh, more subscribers, but uh, of course I got Earthbound. Um, not anything that, you know, people have never seen before or anything that's gonna blow somebody's head off, 
But, uh, you know, for me, getting Earthbound it was a really good thing. I mean, RPGs are what I collect. Whether it's for the PlayStation, or the Genesis, or the PlayStation 2, or whatever, RPGs are generally what I'm about, and um, Earthbound was one of the top ones that I had on my list, and I'm really happy to know it. Got it through a trade at a game store, they had it way overpriced, but fortunately I had so much extra crap that I paid nearly nothing for that uh, it made it worth it to get it. Um, and uh, it's a fantastic game, it really is. Uh, the hype is worth it. Uh, if you're not thinking about the price. It is a great, great RPG for the Super Nintendo. However, in my opinion, no game is really worth actually taking out your wallet, pulling out $200 in cash and handing it to somebody. It's just there's no game that is worth 200 actual dollars. I haven't played a game that fun yet. Um, maybe Final Fantasy III, but it's that's not how much that game goes for. If it did and I didn't have a copy, I might actually buy Final Fantasy III. But, but that's not the case at all. It's, it's Earthbound, and it's a fucking great game. But, again, Snatcher, Earthbound, uh, you know, what are some other ridiculous... Popful Mail, Shining Force 3. None of those games are worth the price they command. But they are great games, and Earthbound is definitely an example of that. Uh, definitely worth trading for. If you need a copy of Earthbound, I highly suggest you get on some Facebook groups and just start talking to people. Uh, that's how I scored a few of my really rare games. Not that one in particular, like I said, that one was from a game store, but what I can say is that you need to get out there, put yourself out there, uh, start photographing things that you have for trade, uh, pick up bulk lots, keep what you want, and trade the rest for things that you do want. Um, you know, give people good deals, that's all I gotta say, don't be a skis bag. I always give people uh, undervalue on trade or in sale, and that, that assures me that my stuff's gonna move fast and I'm gonna get what I want and actually be a satisfied customer, generally. <laughs> I did get ripped off one time, just recently, and uh, I'm gonna probably do a little rant or video about that as well, because that shit's just funny. Be wary on the Facebook groups and uh, be logical, use some logic, but at the same time, know that you can get some really expensive games if you just have a little bit of trading fodder and maybe you're willing to trade up a little bit. Maybe if you're willing to give somebody a little more value in trade than what they're expecting. Anyways, that's a whole rant in itself as well. Uh, thank you very much to my friend Jake, who's the one who told me about this, and uh, Thank you to the guy that posted the video I watched of this being done. What was his name? It's uh, a Crosby 1099. And uh, yeah, he had a really good video. I'll actually put a link to that video in my description below. Uh, I think I subscribed to that guy as well. If I didn't, I'm going to right now. So that's it. What are you guys' five most valuable games? Each game has to be for a different console. No five Super Nintendo games like I'd like to do. Uh, what are your most expensive, you know, Game Boy, Nintendo, Saturn, freaking Genesis, Super Nintendo, N64, what's your most expensive game? Please leave a comment. I want to read those comments. I respond to most comments, if not all comments, because I like talking about games. And uh, if you like the video, please give a thumbs up. That button's down below. I'm sure you guys have seen it before. I'm sure you guys have thumbed up other videos, and uh, I'd like to see more thumbs up on mine. That'd be freaking amazing. And if you do like my videos and you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's actually in the same area below. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Leave a video response if you want. That'd be amazing. And uh, this is Nintendo signing off. And keep rocking the retro games.